do a little bit of telling people. And then I will be taking off my weave design, which I have been wearing for a week and have had zero wear on. There aren't any chips or lifting or anything. It's uh, actually really holding up very lovelily, but the growth is too much and I need to replace it with something new. So we're going to be doing a reciprocal gradient with these green polishes over here. I did a fan brush gradient with them. Uh, I don't remember when, sometime in the past year on the fan brush week of the 52 week challenge. Um, and I have never done a reciprocal gradient before, so I wanted to, to try one. And I know that those colors blend well together. You know, they have a good gradient. So that's what I thought I'd do. So give me, give me just a second. Let me get the right the right notifications to the right people. There we go. Okay. All right, let's get my clips so I can start removing what I've got on. One of them is up here already and the other ones are down here in my little tub. I don't know which nail vinyls I'm gonna be using yet. So that is part of what I have to decide. I'm probably gonna be looking at those while I remove what I've got on. So let's get some acetone. and some uh, cotton balls. <clears throat> Here we are. I really liked these nails. The only thing I wish that I had done slightly differently for these nails, you know, I, I like the amount of white space that's left on the thumb. Uh, the best and as my nails, like these ones have the same as each other. And that's still a fine amount. The pinky didn't have as much, uh, as much white left showing through because it's a smaller space and I didn't, uh, adjust the sizes of my leaves quite well enough, but, oh, well, the base color for this is a glitter crelly that has uh, little green and black and white and some little pink bits in it. And that added a lot of really nice subtle detail in the background that I enjoyed. But because of that, I can't just remove it by, you know, scrubbing with a plain cotton ball. I need to soak it with the clips. Otherwise, I'm going to be scrubbing, scrubbing, and I don't want to do that. Let's see if we can adjust the uh, the brightness there a little bit. Oh, my big cat's here. Hey, big cat. You can't see her face. She's staring off into the abyss. And by the abyss, I mean the living room. Okay, so while we're waiting for this hand to soak, let's take a look at some of my nail vinyls. I have these, which are, if I can get it at the angle so you can see the lines, uh, they have thicker stripes that peel out, and the thin stripes are connected by the boxes around the edge. Um, and then the other part of the sheet, that's that side of the sheet, and then the other part of the sheet has thick lines that have thin boxes that come out from between. So either one of those possibly is an option. Uh, and then let's see one of my, yeah, this is the one with all the stripes. I have my, uh, 
vinyls organized by things that are design elements um, and then striped things. So we want striped things, I think. My striping tape is also in here. And I don't need that, so let's put that back. Okay, so we also have chevrons. If we did these, it would most likely be vertically because we want to see the gradient kind of peeking through evenly across the length of the nail. Uh, unless we did a sideways reciprocal gradient where we had the, the vinyl going across the nail and the colors transitioning this way rather than up and down. Which might give a more Easter egg sort of a feeling. So that's a possibility because Easter is next Sunday. Which means that if I'm going to do an Easter design, I should probably do it either today or later this week and, and do my nails a second time. These are just skinny vinyls. You can see they're pretty thin. Um, obviously, those are a possibility. Uh, these ones are even skinnier. I don't think that these are going to be good for showing the... Uh, trying to get a good angle there. Where it doesn't just glare off super bright. There, you can kind of see the thickness of the stripes a little bit. These are too thin. They won't show the background uh gradient as well as I'd like. Got more of these orange ones. They were free, I think, with a stamping plate purchase. So I got several sheets. Okay, these ones also could be relatively Easter feeling. They've got little wavy kinds of lines. And there you can see kind of at that angle where the light's reflecting, where the cuts are. Um, so that's a possibility. I got a couple of sheets of that, and then here's some more of those chevrons that we were talking about before. And then I have these more skinny chevrons, which, as we were discussing previously with the other skinny stripes, it's hard to show the cuts uh, there that you can see there. Um, those are a little bit too thin, I think. Um, I might like the slope of that chevron better than the slope of this chevron but uh, I think it would be too much of a pain to try to stack three or four or whatever together um, and I don't it's like not that big of a difference so that's a no I'm leaning toward one of these the uh, oh thank you for the host praise it didn't notify me on my computer did it do I have my sound turned off? It could be that I just didn't hear the sound. No, my sound is not turned off. I don't know why that didn't notify me. Thank you. <laughs> oh, the baby. Look at her sweet little face. She's so cute. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm leaning toward one of these and doing um, reciprocal this way. And then we might add some dots. I have a whole bunch of other coordinating greens up here. The three that we're using for the gradient are Society Wit, The Scholar, uh, S, what is this, OPI, Ayahuasca Made Me Do It, and this Essence, Pretty Cool Life. Um, they gradate pretty well together. I have a little test that I was doing to try to decide which sponge I wanted to use. This test I did with a denser sponge, um, these two, this one had the essence color as the base and this one was just three coats plain of sponging. And then this one and this one I used a more porous sponge. Um, and I actually got a smoother gradient for these colors with the denser sponge, which I was surprised by because, um, in other testing I've seen done with other colors, uh, the more porous sponge gave a better a better gradient. So I don't know how it's going to act on my nail. And I like the texture of the more porous sponge, so I think I'm just going to experiment with the more porous sponge and see how it turns out. Because I'm curious. Um, and it will, of course, 
Okay. So I just took my clip off. You can see the little glitters that are left behind. But they are loose. They were scooching as I was pulling it off. So let's take these off. Um, the yeah, the more porous sponge is a Swispers sponge. You can see that it has more holes in it. And then the denser sponge, I don't remember the brand. I took them out of the bag a long time ago. I think I got it the bag at Ulta. The makeup sponges at Ulta that they have are these ones. I, I think it was just the... Uh, I don't remember what brand, but they're the more dense kind of makeup sponge that you can find. Look at how clean that came off, all the glitter. On Le Cotton. I have a little bit of flaking on the edge of this nail, or I did last week. Yeah, that I might have to kind of smooth the edge of a little bit before we continue. Um, I'm going to reuse these cotton balls, by the way. I'm just going to flip them this way for this other hand. Um because they're still saturated with acetone and I'm not, I don't want to waste. I don't want to waste. Oh, I should probably bring you down again now that we're done looking at the polish. Anyway, I have all these other greens out uh, that I might be able to use as like a dot accent or something to make it feel even more Easter eggish. I was considering doing like a Skittles kind of a deal with different colors on each finger, but I didn't want to <laughs> go and pick all the colors for that. Not that it wouldn't be cute. I just felt like I wanted to use these ones that are tried and true, so I didn't have to do quite so much testing to figure out which ones go well. Okay. All of these glitter bits that are on the skin will have to wash off later after I'm done because I'm not going to spend all my time scrubbing those. Nice and clean. That polish lasted really well, though, on me. Like I said, not even any lifting. Nothing. No no hint of wanting to go away. I was tempted to leave it on, but I knew that I would not want to do my nails again on a, a middle-of-the-week night as easily as I could on a Sunday. So I decided to not do that. Do you see that flaking area a bit there? Okay, so let's get these on the other hand. Oh, that's really getting washed out right now. Hey, sorry guys. See if we can adjust, adjust a little bit so it's not quite so washed out. There we go. This reminds me of uh, in middle school, I made these paper folded talons. Every time I put these on, it makes me think of that. Okay, so um, we have to decide between the wiggly waves and the chevrons. I am leaning toward the chevrons because it's slightly more Easter eggy and they're slightly wider, which means they'll show the gradient a little bit better going the opposite direction. Plus they have, uh, the sides are already pre-attached. 
uh, to keep the spacing even, which is convenient. So I think that's what we're going to do. Decision made. Let's put all these other stripey things away. Back into the envelope they go. Not that envelope. Where's the other envelope? Oh, I put it down here. My big sleepy big cat. She's so cute. Uh, I'm trying to turn these without using my uh, stone covered hand so that they fit lengthwise instead of height wise so that I can close the envelope again. I think this one's too big. That's why it wasn't in there to begin with because I hadn't trimmed it down. I'll do that later when I have two hands available to me. Okay, so while we're waiting for this to finish soaking off, I'm gonna use my little buff. <clears throat> I can hold a file, kind of, <laughs> with this contraption if I do it here. So I'm gonna really make sure that this little flaky area is not gonna get caught on anything. I'm not doing any filing lengthwise on my nails this week because they are where I would file them to if I were filing them. So next week we'll be filing. Since I had filed them down so short, they have now caught back up two weeks later to where I usually like them to be. This edge does need a little bit of a shape change. Um, you know, even if you're not changing the length of your nail, sometimes a nail will grow slightly unevenly, like one corner will stick out more and disrupt the curve. So, no harm fixing that. Nope, not ready to do yet. Sorry, big cat, did my hair get in your space? Anyway, um, these three colors, if I do an accent, I debated. I debated using these two colors, Zoya Wyatt and Essie Off Tropic that I used in some testing for St. Patrick's Day. And they gradiented really well together also. Hey! No, praise. This is not the same green gradient. The green gradient that I want to do, and it's not long lost, it's just never found. Um, the gradient that I want to do is not really a gradient, it's an ombre across all of my, all five of my nails, and it's using olive green polishes, going from super dark olive green to almost like a pastel but still having that olive tone. And no, I did not find that. Uh, we're doing a much more uh, blue-green sort of a design rather than a uh, olive green, yellow toned green kind of a design. I decided not to use those two though because there's only two colors there and the reciprocal bit. Um, I guess a reciprocal with two colors would be more obvious because the middle color won't blend together, but it won't create as much of an optical illusion then. I'm not seeing any of your stuff up on my OBS on chat. It's a good thing I had my dashboard open on my phone, otherwise I wouldn't be able to see what you're saying on screen. Yeah, okay, let me, let me try to use my non-dominant hand to navigate that and see if I can restart the chat window. Oh, there it goes. There. Can you see me on screen now? Or can you see chat on screen now? I'm not sure why it was doing that. All I did was select the chat window and it autom it just brought it back into being into uh, functioning. It was like it was sleeping or something, which is weird. 
because that's never happened before. Can you say something else? So I can see if it is fine with it deselected again. Are you at Dan's house? Where are you? Patiently waiting. Hi! No, it uh, apparently was not functioning. Can you see it now? I see it now. <laughs> this is so fun to do while you're just waiting for the clips to dry. <laughs> it's just like, meow, meow, meow. If I feel like uh, one of those creepy puppets in the background of the labyrinth. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Okay, I think this is ready to come off. I still, I. it's so funny the way it leaves the glitter behind. You can see all the green and pink now, though, in the background. Hey. Uh, even though it's ready to come off, you know, it still sticks around a little bit longer than the other bit. And look at that. I got it all over my finger. Good job, Gloria. I saw that Caters was starting to do some nail polish streaming, and I totally missed, missed it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. LJ. You, you got it. Um, there was, uh, I don't know if you were here when I was talking about the little origami things that I used to do too. Praise, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, where you fold the paper to make a, like a claw that fits on the end of your finger. Oops. I am a klutz. But my big cat's cute. So she can be the attention stealer. And make people not notice that I'm a klutz. Are you doing anything Easter-y on your nails, LJ? I don't know, I wasn't even really thinking about it until after I decided to do my re a reciprocal gradient, and then I was like, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> Easter's this next Sunday. <laughs> okay, see, even though I can reuse the cotton, pastel smoosh, cute. I don't have a lot of pastels. Um, I mean, I have some, but I don't have a lot in my nail polish collection because pastels don't really look all that great on me. Like bright pastels. If it's more grayed out, I can swing it pretty well. But they're not my... They don't complement my coloring super well. I've got fall autumn coloring. Yeah, I know. Such is the struggle. <laughs> do I want to leave this the way that it is, or do I want to put something else over the top? How long have you had it on? Have you been enjoying it as just a smoosh for a little bit? Where did I put... Oh. Oh, okay, yeah. I got a new cuticle trimmer. They stopped carrying the ones that I used to like at CVS. Uh, I have been to four different CVSs looking for them, and none of them have them anymore. 
Uh, so I went to Walmart and they had some that looked okay. And they've seemed like they have pretty good blades on them. Like they're not super dull. Because that's the thing about a cuticle trimmer to get rid of hangnails. You want it to be sharp so that it just trims off a little bit that you need to trim off and doesn't like rip off a bunch of your extra skin with it. What colors do you have in the design? Because that obviously will influence. Oh, I got a new glass file. I replaced the one that broke. Same kind. Uh, but the one that I got this time came with a little mini one that I'm going to take and put in my work drawer. The drawer in my desk at work. So that I can have a glass file there too. But the other one is so short, it's only about this long. From the here to here. It's all little. <laughs> Pink, blue, yellow, and green. Pastel, pink, blue, yellow, and green. You could use like a, a purple. If you do a slightly darker purple. Mm, so that it shows up against the lighter pastel. But still, you know, still pastel purple, but slightly darker than the other colors. Or you could do... Um, I was going to say like a creamsicle orange, but you can't go really a little bit darker with that. Uh, without it looking more pumpkin-y or more uh, not pastel, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, which white were you using? Do you have... Um, is it just because the pastels are so light that the white kind of blends into it? Or is it because it's not a, an opaque white? Okay, so now before I start, i got to make sure i got my liquid latex well within reach because we're going to want that for the sponging. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, maybe... You could also pick, like, a slightly darker version of one of the other colors if you didn't want to add a purple into it. You know, you could do, like, a slightly darker blue or a slightly darker um, green or a slightly darker pink. Or you could skittle that. You know, you could have one nail be a slightly darker pink and one nail be a slightly darker blue and one nail be a slightly darker green and one nail be a slightly darker yellow. But then that's only four. And what do you do with the thumb? Repeat your favorite color or add another color like the purple. What stamping were you thinking of putting on there anyway? Like an Easter eggy sort of a stamp or like a bunny sort of a stamp or like a flower sort of stamp? Oh. That, um. <laughs> you're saying that like it's a problem, but too much green is never a problem in my book. This edge is not wanting to be. This side of this pinky finger is like one of my trouble spots. The skin always wants to be a little bit peely because the nail always wants to be a little bit too far this way. So then I file the, this way. So I think the nail gets rubbed a little bit too much. The skin. But that's okay. Yeah, that'd be cute. If you did, um, you know, you could do, uh, 
either like a reverse stamp sort of a deal and fill it in with multiple colors per nail if you really wanted to do more work. Um, or obviously, like you said, you could pick, pick a color and do, you know, the same for all of the nails. I've got a little bit of cuticle hanging out here on this middle finger. Do you see that on the nail plate right there? So I'm going to scrape that off really fast. Make sure it's not going to impede my base coat from adhering. Uh, I don't think I have any on any... I have a little on my pinky. Um, and a little on my thumb. This metal, by the way, is really flexible and it's not like... It's not going to scratch my nail bed to be using that. And I don't have a lot of cuticle to get rid of, otherwise I'd get my little cuticle pusher instead. But I've got to make sure all of these little bits are not on there because they will prevent the polish from adhering well. And they will lift out the cuticle. Okay. I mean, you could do white flowers that aren't stamped, too. Uh, if you do, like, uh, or like a double stamp, right? Where you have, like, a, a darker color. Where you stamp the image with, like, the darker color first. Like a darker blue or a darker purple. And then you stamp the white. Uh, kind of, a, like, on that, but kind of slightly offset. Or if you did it with a uh, reverse stamp and filled it in with white. Okay. It's time for base coat. So let's, let's get that. My big cat is so stripey. She's got this big old stripey arm hanging out here. All these little orange prettinesses. Isn't that right, my sweetie patoot? My big happy cat smile. She's a sweet, sweet one. I'm going to pet you now, big cat, before my nails get wet and I can't for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> She's so cute. Are you okay there, Fuzz Fuzz? <laughs> She's leaning into it. Very sweet. Yeah, this is a good girl. I don't know if you can hear her purring. Probably not. And she's very sweet. Sorry, big one. All right. <laughs> and then ask Stone again. All right, make sure there's no cat whatever <laughs> on my nail. <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> All right. Base coat. Glisten and glow base coat. Uh, here we go. I don't have my cleanup brush ready to go. And I should have, because I ran into my cuticle. There is a brand of nail vinyls 
that's made by someone called The Base Coat. That has a lot of really nice chevron kinds of designs. I've never used those, so I've just seen them around. I think the chevrons are a little bit wider, a lot of them, so that you get like a couple of points and they're slightly offset on the nail, which is a cool look. I don't remember where these blue chevron vinyls came from. I think that they came from the KB Shimmer website as a, a freebie thing, actually, which is weird because most of my nail vinyls come from What's Up Nails. But the orange ones I know came from KB Shimmer, and I think that the blue ones did too. The orange straight stripes. I was a hair, sorry. It's still there. There we go. Get air. <laughs> now see, that's what I get for waiting too long. She's so snuggly. Oh my god. Her sweet little face. Yes, big cat. I love you too. She's so pretty too. Okay. There's a whole subreddit of uh, cats admiring other people. It's called Cats Myron. I'm pretty sure. Or Animals Myron. And it's got other animals too. You know, that look of love that fills their whole face when they look at someone that they enjoy. It's very cute. I think I have to tilt the camera the other way because I'm on the other hand. Yes. And there's my phone. So let me move that. And let's see if we can adjust the brightness here. There. That's a little bit less flared out. There. Ah, there's glitters. Here be glitters. <laughs> That reminds me of a little story that I read at work sometimes where there's a, a guy named Captain Sparklebeard who is a uh, pirate who likes glitter. And the name of the story is called Glitter Me Timbers. Because he wants to decorate his whole ship with purple glitter. He goes to Shimmerland every spring to replenish his glitter supply. <laughs> it's kind of silly. All right. I did not run into my skin. I like I like it when that happens. It's easier to do with this base coat than with other things, though. There's a glitter right there that I just base coated and several cat hairs. I think I'm just going to have to redo this nail. Give me a second. Okay, that's fine. Have fun with your game. With your, uh, whatever it's called, scenario. Okay, 
Get out of there. This glitter does not want to let go. There we go. There's another one on that side. Now we got some dry skin stuck on the nail on this side, some cuticle that I didn't see before. I'm just making sure that all of that is gone. This is this the nail that had that weird blood bruise thing. And so the, the layers on the sidewall are st of my skin are still not quite evened out. Like, there's a little bit of an edge where all of this skin is like two layers down or something. Thin little skin layers down from the top layer. And they're not quite even yet, but they will be soon. There, that's better. It's even enough for me to deal with now. And then... No cat hairs, please. I think that we're going to put a base color down first before we start sponging. Uh, just because that will hope maybe make the sponging a little faster. Um, that's not quite dry enough on the other hand. So I gotta wait just a second. Well, you can't see the big cat. She turned around. All you're seeing is the back of her head. Okay, so what we have for the base color is going to be this Essence Pretty Cool Life. I wish these Essence bottles were bigger. They're only 0.27 fluid ounces, 8 milliliters. And I really like this color. And it was a limited edition something, so it's not... Not going to be around to like repurchase, you know. It's really similar in color to a CND polish, a uh, Vinelux polish called Sage Scarf, but I like the formula and the brush on the Essence polish better. Which is not to say that I, I mean, you know, I can use the CND one instead once this one's gone, but I, I like this one better. It's just a nice, oh, pardon me, I switched hands again and I forgot to move you. It's just a nice kind of a greening with a little bit of a blue undertone to it. Muted and pleasant to look at. Someone was asking in the uh, No Dumb Questions Reddit Lacarista's help thread about capping the tip of the nail and why it's important. And it's important because it creates the edge of the polish as being under your nail instead of right at the edge of your nail where it's more likely to bang into things and cause chipping. If you cap the tip, the polish wraps around the tip of the nail and goes underneath. Now, of course, throughout the course of your week, it's not going to stay that way. That edge is going to, you know, probably wear off because your base coat didn't go all the way where all of that polish under there went. Um, but that doesn't stop it from having been helpful. And you can't see the way that the polish under there is changing unless you're the person whose nails belong to you, right? Uh, 
Because nobody else is going to be like zooming in up on the underside of your nail. I, I like this brush. The rounded wide brush makes it so much easier to apply well. at the cuticle area. Do you see? It's just so much easier. Got all these cotton ball fuzzies. Okay, I'm going to do that just a little bit. Make sure that my cuticle area is even on my pinky so that the curve of the epinicium is an even curve so that when I apply my polish it goes everywhere it's supposed to go and doesn't create a weird uneven edge that's slightly flatter on one side like my pinkies want to do. We have discussed this, especially at the pinky on my right hand, which we will get to in a minute. There. Of course, this is going to have sponging over the top of it, so it's not... Hi, Lexi! How are you? We are in the middle of the beginnings of, in the middle of the beginnings of, a uh, reciprocal gradient with a kind of this muted bluish, greenish, whatever. So thank you for joining me and us, whoever else is in chat. Um, this color is Essence Pretty Cool Life. There it is. And we're doing base color, so. Oh, let me, let me do this with the camera for the next hand. I'm doing good. I've been, uh, I spent most of yesterday watching Fargo, which is a show that my husband was watching at work. They have, uh, I know it does sound funny. They have a, a warehouse where they're doing computer related repairs and stuff and they, they have stuff on in the background while they're working. And, um, this edge doesn't want to be anything, so I'm just going to glom it on there and clean it up. Um, anyway, he was watching it because someone at work suggested it, and he thought that I would be interested in the well-acted and uh, interesting character show that it is. So, that's what I've been up to. There we go. Um, that edge is not clean at all. The real realities of painting your non-dominant hand. There. There. That's a little better. Um, have Have anybody, any anybody else? Have you guys seen Fargo? I finished season one, and I started season two, but I'm not too far into season two, so no spoilers, please. Apparently it was also a movie. They made the movie first. And James was saying that it was based on a book that was written also, not apparently. A not a book? No. Oh, it's I... based on real life. I know it's based on real life, but I thought someone wrote a book about it first and then it was adapted. But I guess not. I was wrong. I misheard. We don't watch TV, TV... And James especially, like, never watches anything. So whenever he recommends something, I know it has to be actually worth your time, you know? It's not just filler activity. It's a compelling story.
So what have you been up to this week then? I got cat hairs. This is my life. There we go. <laughs> Concentration. Lots of yard work. Okay. Uh, what kind of weather do you have where you live? Are, are you just starting to like clean up after snowy stuff, or is it other other yard related things? I live in an apartment. We don't have a yard, but we do have a patio, and I had a bunch of flowers and not flowers, mostly herbs actually, out on the patio, um, and then a really bad windstorm a couple of years ago knocked all of my shelving down and kind of crushed a lot of the plants. Um, and I kind of let them just be dead and that was sad. Um, but because of that, there's a lot of planters out there. And so this year there were some like weeds that <laughs> sprung up in them. So I had to cut those all down. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My father-in-law is into citrus trees. He's got a lot of citrus trees in his backyard, and he takes care of them. And they have some roses and stuff, too, that my... I think my mother-in-law is more invested in the roses. I wish that I had more yard space than I do. And then I had a hose. That's like a much more convenient way of taking care of your plants than trudging back and forth through your house with a watering can repeatedly while trying not to let your cats out through the door. <laughs> oh, darn, I hit my sidewall. Oh well. That's what cleanup's for. I'm in California too. Yeah. California is so big, though, you know, that a lot of its weather is not necessarily... Like, if you're in Maryland and you're like, oh, the weather's like so, you know, yeah, of course. Like, most of Maryland is probably experiencing the same weather. But in California, that's not the case. It's been getting warmer down here, though, in SoCal. We actually put our air conditioner back into the door. We have a portable air conditioner. We have not used it as an air conditioner yet, but we've been starting to use it as a fan to circulate air from the outside at night, bringing cooler air in. There we go. And the same thing on this cuticle. Do you see how it angles down on that side? We just gotta push it up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. We have the, you know, the rainy season and the dry season. guys up there probably have more rain even than we do down here. Ok. 
because you're closer up by Oregon and Washington and the rainy northwest. A lot of people don't like rain. I love rain. I like cloudy weather. Oh, the big cat's being sweet again. I'm going to get cat cam once more. There she is. Yeah, I do too. My mom can't do rain. She doesn't like cloudy stuff. It makes her sad. Seasonal, affective, whatever. But, uh, I love rain. All right, we're going to put liquid latex on before we start sponging so that we don't get polish all over everything. Getting as close as I can to the cuticle area and as wide as I think I need to on the sides and moving downward. Okay, do you see there how it's like there's an edge that I can cover. I don't need to go on too much of the end of my finger, I don't think, because my nails are long enough right now that they kind of protect the tip of the nail. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. I agree. I really don't like warm weather. If I live my whole life wearing a sweater, I'm fine with that. I'd much rather not have to live my whole life melting into a puddle on my bed and just groaning to the sky, why is it so hot? Or to the ceiling, rather, since I would be inside. I sunburn really, easy, really easily, too, and I don't, therefore, enjoy sunny days. I know I have friends that are like the opposite. They're like, I want it to be sunny. I want it to be so bright and beautiful. And I want to be able to go jog on the beach and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, good for you. I'm glad you enjoy that. That is not me. <laughs> you hate leather. Oh, I thought you said I hate leather. And I was like, mm, that's awfully overarching LJ uh, but winter yeah 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 James has uh, eczema really bad eczema that uh, flared up about four years ago really really badly and then it kind of went back dormant for quite a while and then the past year or so it's been kind of poking its head out again not as bad as it did the first time because he had uh, more information about how to handle it because he had, you know, talked to the doctor the first time and he knew a little bit more of things that he could do to help calm it down again. Um, but still not fun. And a lot of times it's triggered by changes in the weather, so... You know, of all the places to live, Southern California is not that bad because it only changes twice, you know, mostly from s winter into spring and summer and then from that into fall slash winter. Oh, I'm not on camera. Sorry, guys. I don't have that bad of allergies. But I have, uh, I used to wear contacts and uh, I stopped wearing contacts because my eye allergies apparently started to exist. I was, uh, I don't know, I would just get really itchy red eyes when I would try to put my contacts in in the morning and it just was not worth it. So I started wearing glasses instead. But I don't have, like, wheezy, coffee, sneezy stuff that most people who talk about allergies deal with. And for that, I am grateful. Uh, 
Yeah. Oh, by the way. Hi, Nate. I thought you were LJ because you're the same color in chat. How are you? <sighs> Waiting for this hand to dry. <laughs> oh, you're like a mountain man. <laughs> I'm doing all right. I finished uh, and then there were none. I do recommend. It was well written and interesting. I'm not going to spoil anything for you. It's quite different than a lot of other Agatha Christie books because it doesn't follow someone who's trying to solve the crime. Uh, like Miss Marple and Poro. It is following the crime while it's happening. Crimes, I guess. A bunch of murders wrapped up in one big crime, I guess. Uh, and you as the reader are trying to figure out what's happening. You get a lot of perspective into uh, multiple different characters' mindsets as you're reading, which is interesting. You're not just seeing the physical happenings, you're also seeing the mental state, so that informs some of your inferencing. There is a goober in here. Let's get it out before I continue. Because it's impacting my application. There. The big cat's being a sweetie patoot, though. Do you see her? I don't know what... Uh, I don't think I know the plot of that. I've heard of it, but I don't know the plot. But now that I know that it's similar to And Then There Were None, my interest level has increased. <laughs> I'm going to have to push those edges back off of the nail before I start to sponge, otherwise we're not going to get gradient there. But I have to wait for it to dry first, otherwise it's just going to not come off and ding everything underneath it instead. It's so funny how not green next to this neon green, this green looks. It just looks kind of gray. Oh, it's a game. I was not thinking that. Is that the one that had Prosy D as the voice of the cat detective person? Is that is that the thing I'm thinking of? Oh, then no. Okay. All right. I'm thinking of something else. Again. Pardon. I always forget that when I switch hands, I need to adjust the camera to be able to just stay where I want to be and still be on frame. A little bit more around the corners. Here we go. Okay. Thanks. I'm sure I can Google it too. But links are, you know, always easier.
<laughs> I was trying to get, there was a little divot in my, where there was a hangnail, and uh, I was trying to get it covered with latex, and in the process, I banged it into the side of my nail. I thought I could do it so carefully, I was wrong. Okay. So that's done. Let's make sure we don't have any little straggly bits of latex on any of these nails. See, there's one. Right there on that edge. The latex is touching and it needs to come off so that it's not interfering with our gradient. That edge is fine. Right here we got a little bit. You probably can't see that on camera. I have the autofocus off and I just have a set focal distance. Otherwise I'd bring it closer so you could see. But in general, uh, the fixed focal distance has been better for keeping things more generally in focus rather than more generally in fuzz. <laughs> Yes, um, it's, I bought the kind that uh, Kelly Marissa recommends in all of the links on her YouTube channel. It works really well. It comes in a lot of different colors. Uh, Colette has just recently purchased the pearly white one of the same variety. So if you, any of her recent ones where she's using latex, she's using the same kind. Uh, just in a different color as this. And it works really well. It peels off really well. It um, is a lot cheaper than Simply Peel or some of the ones that are more specifically marketed as nail latex. Okay, so let's get our giantly porous sponges. Swispers, wedges, jumbo cosmetic wedges, latex free. I should have gotten these out before I started. Hang on, let's just... Let's just do this and let them fall so we don't have to reach into the bag. All right, so we have the Essence Polish and also this OPI color, Ayahuasca Made Me Do It, and a Society Wish, Society Wit Polish called The Scholar. We're going to be applying those onto the nail. Um, since we're doing a horizontal gradient rather than a vertical gradient. I think the easiest thing to do um, is going to be to mark out the width, the thickness, the width of the nail visually so I know how far over to apply each color. Yeah, no, you shouldn't. It, um, it's way more expensive, and this works just as well, if not slightly better, because it doesn't get quite so clumpy so fast. What do you mean on your cuticles? Like on the top edge of your polish next to your cuticle? See, look, now mine's trying to peel. I started to close that earlier and I shouldn't have because that made it harder to get just now. Oh, I'm not on camera. Sorry. So we're gonna do this. Which doesn't look like it did very much because I didn't get as much of the dark as I should have. I have a cat hair in my nail again. 
That is not good. Go away, cat hair. I don't know. I might end up doing vertical instead. If this... You know, I can't judge. I can't judge after one coat. It takes several coats to build up. And there will be contrast in the reciprocal where you can see the gradient better. Sorry, I, need, I, I do need to tell you guys the other way. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, so we're doing the dark on this side first. It's going to have to build up with several layers. Oh, I see what you're saying. It takes practice, just like everything. Sponging, sponging, sponging. That one actually is coming out pretty good. And then I'm just going to do the next nail since there's enough polish in the sponge. In my testing, it took three layers of sponging to really get the color built up well. And then we're doing a reciprocal. So then we have to do top coat over that. And then put the vinyls down. And then three layers of sponging going the other way. Okay. You can see that it's starting to get darker on that other edge. The more porous sponge holds more polish and releases more polish than the less porous sponge. So you, it's easier to apply polish to one nail right after the other without reapplying polish to the sponge. because um, it lets it go again a little bit easier. Excuse me. bit more of this. I wish I wish that I didn't have quite as much missing out of this essence bottle. It's making it a little harder. Uh, to apply it to the sponge. How dry is this? Dry enough for another coat. Because if I can finish one hand and then put top coat on it and then 
go and do the other hand while the top coat is setting before I put the vinyls on it, that will be the most time efficient, I think. I got a tip. Tip the bottle, get more polish out. Yeah. I see how it's getting darker. Darker and lighter, darker and lighter. And then we're going to have the zigzags going the other way. These polishes really do blend into each other pretty seamlessly, though. If you're not looking, it's hard to see the transition. That big cat, she's given us a cold shoulder. Okay. We've got a little bit more dark. Really making it as seamless as possible. There we go. Sometimes there's just like one little spot that isn't quite as blended as you want, and so you gotta just go back over it one more time. There we go. Okay. And pinky. Okay. I hear her snoofing. Oh, she stood up. Let's adjust. There she is. Oh, it's not tilting. Hang on. There. That's better. Oh, you big sweetie. Oh, no. Look, I picked up the polish that was underneath. So now I have to do a little bit of polish surgery. The sponge was too dry. I'll have to go over and blend that again with the sponge in a minute. When I blend over the top with the sponge, that will be hidden again. Ha! 
<laughs> don't you tisk tisk me. <laughs> you don't know how to do any of this stuff. <laughs> Although you are learning it watching me. Although I don't think you're practicing because I don't think you paint your nails. Okay, let's just do one more once over. Really making sure that all of these nails are looking as well blended as we want them to be. And then we'll blend that pinky. And of course, as we've previously stated, um, the second layer of gradient will be going back across over the other direction. So there will be contrast between the dark and the light. Okay. Okay, so let's, hmm, decisions, decisions. Are we going to remove the latex and clean up and then put on top coat and then reapply latex for the next coat? Or are we going to be kind of lazy and leave on the latex? I think the answer is leave on the latex, but separate the polish before it dries so that we aren't being left with a lip where it peels off. So let's do that. We're just going to go around the edge of each one and separate it. From the latex. Some of these are already separated because the nail is uh, slightly further away from the sidewall. But here, do you see where that polish is connected? We're going to separate that. So that it's not going to peel off the polish that's on the nail when we remove the latex. We're also going to be careful with our top coat not to get it all into the cuticle. The only reason we're applying top coat in between is because we're putting nail vinyls on and we don't want it to peel off uh, to peel off. Oh, she left. Well, let's do this then. Hi. Um, to peel off the polish underneath when we put the vinyl on. So let's do the top coat. I want a thinner top coat for this because we're going to do several layers. Let's do blood orange scent, vibrant vinyls, out for blood, fast enough. This top coat's a little thinner than the Glisten and Glow one. So if I know I'm going to be doing another layer of top coat later, it makes sense for me to be putting a thinner one on in the middle part so that my nails don't get all thick and chonky. <laughs> well, thank you, Alina. I prefer it to be a hobby. I like doing my own nails. I don't think I mean, doing other people's nails is fine, but it's not nearly as enjoyable. I was telling somebody, it, you can't feel the other hand when you're doing somebody else's nails, so it feels different. You can't control how much pressure you're applying for certain aspects of the process as easily 
because you can't feel it. Um, and I don't know. I like my job with the job I already have. I don't want to stop teaching children how to speak and communicate in order to just do nails. If you didn't know, Lexi, I think you're the only one here who didn't know. I'm a speech therapist. Okay, there we go. Yes, yes, I am. Okay, so top coat's on. Shiny, 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 shiny. That's so funny. It doesn't look like the light's moving because the reflection stays in the same spot. Okay, let me take a drink. I'm going to bang into the camera on accident, I think, a little bit. While I bring my giant mug over here. <clears throat> and we're going to fix this latex because it's peeling up too soon. And while we are waiting for this top coat to dry, we are going to sponge the other hand. Which apparently means we're coming back to the thumb because I ran into the edge there. I think I'm just going to peel this whole thing off the thumb and just redo the whole thumb. Because I can. If I'm waiting for some of it to dry, I might as well be waiting for all of it to dry. There's something so moisturized feeling after you take off liquid latex from your cuticle area. You can tell that your skin has had a protective something around it that's preventing it from releasing moisture. <laughs> it's like, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess if you've ever had like latex gloves on and then you take those off, you kind of know the feeling. Except instead of your whole hand being clammy, it just feels like your cuticle is really moist. <laughs> yes, Lexi. It's excellent latex. I love it. Okay, so for this side, uh, because we have the dark, we need to do a different direction. Uh, we're just going to use a different sponge. That will make it easier. So we want the dark to be on this side for this hand's first layer. And again, the nails aren't as wide as they are long, so we're trying to keep it relatively narrow. And I just got some of that other color on my brush, so I'm going to make sure that I wipe it off before I go back into the bottle, because I don't want to mix... I want to mix the colors on a sponge, I don't want to mix the colors in the bottle. Do you know what I'm on? Y'all know what I mean. Uh, the, le the latex, Lexi, that I use comes in a pretty big tub thing, and you have to kind of decant some of it into a an empty nail polish bottle that you either cleaned out with acetone because it was a polish that you used up, or you just bought an empty polish bottle to use for it. Um, it doesn't come with the bottle because it's not intended for nails. It's intended to be latex body paint, I think. But the process is pretty easy. If you get a little plastic syringe, you can just 
slurp up some of the latex into the syringe and then put it into the bottle pretty easily. And once the latex dries, you can peel it out of the syringe and it doesn't clog it up. One of my pet peeves with gradients is if the dark color or the color that isn't the base color doesn't go all the way to the edge on the nails. Because, uh, like, on this side, it's already the lightest color. So if you don't fully go all the way to the edge with that same color, you're not going to notice. But if you leave a little pale rim around the dark, like you can see on this nail, there's a little bit right there on that corner. I don't know if you can see that. No, you can't. But that's going to come off with cleanup, that little edge, uh, so it doesn't bother me. But if it stays that way after I'm done and it, like, has a little ring of the other color, it kind of bothers me in the back of my brain. So I'm trying to overarchingly tilt the sponge in that direction. Uh, some liquid latexes are made for nails, Lexi, uh, but this particular one is not. But it's very similar in, you know, the way that it works. There's not, they're both skin safe, they're both cosmetic, whatever, because it's, you know, intended for, like, makeup effects and stuff. Uh... Because it's flexible, it moves with the skin and all that. That little fuzz needs to go down. Stop trying to climb up high. Uh, my sponge was not moist enough. And it was trying to grab onto the polish underneath it. So I need to put more polish on it. There we go. That was a much juicier brushful. And you see this is almost dry on my thumb, so by the time I finish my pinky I'll be ready to go and do my thumb. I guess I should have started with my pinky then and made it be a straight line instead of having to loop back around, but oh well. Uh, I am going to have to push back that latex on the edge there, though, where it's climbing up onto the nail. It needs to back off a little bit. Because if that gets underneath the polish, it's going to create lifting and trying to peel off the polish when I peel off the latex. So it needs to know where it belongs. Okay. The first layer doesn't really show very much, but it will build up. There's a little piece of latex sponge just now that came off of the sponge. It's not a good sponge. Stop leaving self, bits of yourself behind. Uh. 
I'm not quite in camera. Sorry, guys. Okay, so then uh, I'm actually going to put a little bit more on that nail. And then we're going to go back to the first one that we did and do our second layer. Building up the collar. Got a tip in the bottle and get some polish on it. Okay, and then next nail. Next two can probably be with just the one sponge, yes. I like to go kind of back and forth and up and down, really make sure they're blending well. I'm sure other people. I don't remember where I first heard that trick. It's not really a trick, it's a technique, but you know. I don't remember where I, where I learned it, but I'm glad I did because it helps. And then since we went back to the thumb at the end, this is still coat number two because the thumb needs coat number two. And then we'll do coat number three and we'll be ready to go add the vinyls to our first hand after we put top coat on this one. Okay, so then sponging again. Yeah, see it's starting to build up like the other nail. sure that this last layer blends really well so we're paying careful and a special attention to the finished blend as well as we can we might go back and do a little dab on it again at the end kind of like we did on the other hand This polish is awfully low. We'll have enough. I just got to keep dipping it. Okay. So then this nail. And this nail. I've got a little sponge fuzzy again. There we go. I don't want to leave that behind. Uh, I'm just kind of pushing it off the nail, but it's telling me that I need to put more polish. If you're sponge is leaving little bits of itself behind it means it's not dry enough to be deposit it's it's too dry to be depositing color 
There's not enough color to leave behind to the sticky polish on your nail, so it's leaving bits of itself instead. Okay, there's some on some of those nails, some little spongy bits, but like we're going to have another gradient over the top with the zigzags, so I'm hoping some of those will get covered. We shall see. That's going to be one of the deciding factors on whether we do dots at the end too, is if there is anything that feels like it needs to have more detail or if there's a weird bunch of sponge that's showing through on a couple of nails I will probably want to put something there so that we can look at a dot instead of a sponge bit. We'll see. The cat's back. Did you hear her? She went Purr. That's a little bit too... I don't know. Not quite the sound that she made. Okay. That should be fine. So then we're going to do this. Plug it out. There she is. Pretty, pretty girl. And I got to stretch for a second. Hello. And we're going to. Go around, make sure we don't have extra polish in the cuticle areas. I'm sorry, I think I banged into the camera with my glasses. And then we're going to top coat this hand and move on to applying vinyls and sponging again on second hand. Another reason for applying the top coat, aside from speeding up, speeding up the drying of the polish underneath, um, which prevents lifting when we apply the vinyls, or remove the vinyls, uh, is that it allows you to do some cleanup after. But, like if you have bleeding underneath the vinyls on the second round, it gives you more of a chance to clean up between the layers without ruining the first gradient that you did. Okay, so this is dry enough for vinyls. So let's get our vinyls out after we do the top coat. There's a cat here. I like this scent of this top coat, the fast and hard top coat from Vibrant Vinyls. They do a bunch of different scents, and this one was a polished pickup scent. It's called Out for Blood. I think I mentioned that a couple minutes ago, but it smells like blood oranges. It's not super intense. It's just kind of subtle and fresh, and not fresh in like a gross, weird way. Like some people are like, ooh, this smells so fresh, and then I smell it, and I'm like, no, you smell like a cleaning product. This smells like fresh citrus. Not like a regular orange, but actually like a blood orange. It's got that more uh, pithy, I guess, element to it. I gotta make sure that top coat isn't going on to the edge of the vinyl. It's harder on the left hand, as you well know, to keep things where you want them. I just got a little bit of latex in that top coat too. We'll have to make sure that gets covered up with sponging. It's in the middle, so it's not gonna cause lifting, but it could cause Ugliness. <laughs> I 
Okay. And the thumb. The process is not glamorous to making beautiful nails. It's kind of messy. Okay, so let's put that closed and off to the side and let's get our sponge for our next hand. So for this hand now, we need to have the color going the other way. We want the dark to be on that side, which we have with this sponge. And it's still moist enough that I think we can still use this sponge for that. So, oh wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. We need to put our vinyls on first. We might end up having to use a new sponge if that dries on there too weird. Okay. So, I don't have any good tweezers out here to be able to get the vinyls off with tweezers. So we're just gonna use my hand and hope that we don't rip off the latex prematurely. And we're going to stick it to the back to help peel out the in-between bits. Okay. And we're going to apply it to the nail. Trying to keep it straight, obviously. As straight as it can be. And if we have to snip some of the things with cuticle scissors, we can do that. But we have to be careful not to mess up the nails on our other hand. So I'm gonna actually snip, because that's sticking up weird. And here at this cuticle edge, I'm gonna snip also, cause that's sticking up weird. And that's fine. All right, next nail. And these will be drier in just a minute and then it will be easier to do without ruining everything on the second hand. Oh, come on. Stick, please. There we go. Same deal. I'm going to try to get the point of the chevron kind of along the cuticle on all of them. This one is kind of crooked. But I did snip the one side, so I'm going to have to be careful as I reapply. And careful not to take all my latex off. Ah! <laughs> latex and vinyls together is a tricky, tricky situation. Here we go. That's a little bit more straight. Except I'm a little bit too close to the edge. Hang on. I don't... I need to go that way a little bit. There. <laughs> That's better. And straighter. Ah, yes, life is good. I feel happier about that. Let me push this edge down, make sure it's really well in there. This got crooked. You see how this edge is too close? Because I trimmed that and it didn't keep it even. something pointier. Bye, Lexi. Thanks for the well wishes. Have fun grocery shopping. I probably am going to be back. I am probably going to still be on when you get back. I would assume. Depends on how many stores you're going to. Okay. And we're really making sure that we're 
pressing these down into the nail. Next finger. This is like the worst thing about nail vinyls and reciprocal gradients and all of that is all of the things that are hanging off of your fingers. Because I've got latex and vinyls <laughs> and I'm still trying to peel. It's just kind of silly. Okay, so we got all of these edges down flat as much as we can. Of course, we're going to push each one flat again right before we sponge it, but I just want to make sure it's not going to get caught on stuff and pull off my nail too soon. Praise does this on her book stuff all the time. She weeds her vinyls too. But her vinyls go on to pretty books and mine go on to nails. And her vinyls stay there and my vinyls don't. My vinyls are a stencil. There are some nail vinyls that you can use not as a stencil that do stay on the nail. I have not personally ever used any of those, though. Okay. Okay. Vinyls applied on the one hand and then we're gonna see is this too dry yes it is I'm gonna have to get a new sponge and that's okay I'd rather have a new sponge than risk using an old sponge that's not going to work and is going to ruin all of my hard work that I've already done let's make sure that all of these edges are nice and secure and now we have to reestablish which direction we're doing so it's green on well, they're all green, the darkest green on this side. And we're going. I think we need to go a little bit higher this way because I think my thumbnail is longer than what I painted now this does not have a saturated sponge yet because that's just the first layer of color that's being applied to it for this layer we really do want to make sure we're going on both sides though because the light color has to become opaque over the dark color on the first gradient. So I really do have to make sure I'm going both directions in the edge carefulness. I don't think I put last week's video on YouTube yet. I exported it to YouTube, but I didn't actually like make it public and put the description with the colors on it and stuff. 
I need to do that. <sighs> I gotta make sure that the snail is pressed flat. More polish. Okay, after I finish sponging, I think I did two layers on the thumb before I went to the index finger. So as soon as I'm done sponging on the thumb on that third layer, I'm going to take off the vinyl and latex and things because I don't want it to sit around drying any longer than it has to with it on there. I think that's looking good. So let's take this off. You can see the reciprocal gradient. I like that. Hi, Anne. We're doing a reciprocal gradient chevron with greens, and I really am pleased with that first one that we just revealed. Yay. Obviously, it needs some cleanup. There's a couple of spots where it's not full, fully everything, but boy, do I need to stretch. So hang on just a second. My leg... I have one leg tucked cross legged sort of on this chair and it needs to move. It's yelling at me. So give me a second. I gotta get rid of these cottons. And I gotta stretch it sideways. How are you doing today, Ann? I'm so pleased with that. I just really am happy. <laughs> that that's great. It feels eastery without Yeah, I like. I like I like. Okay. Let's do the sponging, continuing sponging for my index finger still. There. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I can totally understand that. You've got a pretty, pretty deep C curve. And, um, even on some of my nails, like my ring nail is the most curved of all of my nails. Even on some of those, it's kind of annoying, even on mine, and yours are more than mine. Although there are some people with really C-curved nails that enjoy using nail vinyls, like Christine from Simply Nailogical. She does the nail vinyl, did nail vinyls all the time.
I'm going to have to do some cleanup between the layers there. You can see on that final one that it bled under the vinyl a little bit. But overall, these are coming out cute. Cleanup is a separate animal. Design first, then worry about cleanup. <laughs> okay, let's make sure that the next couple of nails are pushed down. It's hilarious to me how much a sponge expands when it uh, gets polish on it, which I know is the same, uh, you know, as when a sponge gets wet, it expands. But it just is so hilarious to me. It's like, all this polish, yum, yum, and it just slurps it up. Hey, I love you. So then, we gotta really make sure we're getting all the way to the edges, just like I was saying before. We don't want any weird side cutlers peeking through. Although, I don't know. I think cutting the vinyl helps with C curves, uh, cutting on the edge so that the vinyl can sit down flush on the other edge. You have to be kind of strategic about it though. Sponge, 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 sponge. Oh, that vinyl bit at the tip didn't want to stay there. I think it's kind of a lost cause. I'm just going to have to carve that out again with the brush if I want it to be there because it got, it got polish where that vinyl on the tip was. The essence polish is losing its essence. I think we'll be okay though. With tipping, gravity can help us. <laughs> Were any of you guys at Cater's stream? I know she streamed yesterday, and I saw that it happened, and then I didn't have a chance to go stop by and say hi. Okay, that looks good. Let's take these off. All one piece. Perfect. And this one. Do you see what I mean about that tip one getting totally obliterated? I'm going to have to remove some in between. But uh, same thing actually on the other nail, the middle nail. But that's why I have top coat in between. So hopefully that'll be okay. Mm. 
This one is so short that the tip vinyl doesn't even really apply, so we don't have to worry about that. You didn't see what? Here at the tip, there was supposed to be one more stripe that was half on the edge. Same thing here. There's like one little bit of triangle that's missing. Do you see? Where the gradient should have uh, gone the opposite direction on those nails too. This is kind of reminding me a little bit of my thumbnail on uh, Instagram. That was a olive green chevron thing that I did. I actually freehanded that with the brushes that came in the polishes. I just angled them. None of them were curved brushes. They were all kind of square and flat. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. 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 I know exactly what you're saying, Anne, and I think that cutting the vinyls would help because then they aren't being one vinyl all the way to the end and you can adjust the amount of curve as it continues further down the nail by pressing it flatter. Okay, there we go, Pinky. Really making sure we get the polish into the corners. I overshot my latex a bit there. <laughs> That's okay. It's not unclean upable, and I'm glad I didn't, w you know, waste time doing a second layer of latex because that all came off just fine. This is wider, obviously, than my pinky nail, so what I'm doing to try to help keep it blended is pushing this edge on that side and this edge on that side, and then going up and down in the middle, and that's helping to make sure that I'm not losing the edges of the gradient, even though my sponge is too wide. My sponge polish area is too wide. I'm making sure I'm keeping those edge colors. I think that's actually opaque. I don't think I need to do more than that. So let's remove that. I, I am so satisfied with the removal of these, by the way, with the latex and the vinyls all coming off in one piece. Yes. Okay. And again, we're going to have to do a little bit of cleanup with a little bit of bleeding, especially there at the tip. But overall, I'm saying yes. Things are coming along well. Uh, I'm not going to do cleanup uh, before we do the other hand, just because this hand's going to get messy again when I'm removing latex and things, so it, I'm going to have to clean it up again. <laughs> Excellent. That's hilarious. I am by I, I mean my husband. <laughs> Uh, okay, now we're going to be doing this hand, so we need to adjust our angle once more. All right, and we need a new sponge, I'm pretty sure, because this one is going the same direction. These sponges, by the way, for future reference, I'm going to use the other side of the sponge on other manicures. You know, I'm just going to, and I'm also going to cut and use the sponge again, but because it's wet, I don't want to be trying to avoid holding the wet part of the polish when I'm trying to use the other side, so I'm just going to let them dry and then trim off the used bit and use them in later designs. They are not going to be wasted. I sound like Edna Mode from The Incredibles. Okay, I do need one more sponge, though. 
I was too short-sighted in my sponge, uh, what's the word? Acquisition. My sponge budget. <laughs> Voila. Yes, I'm really happy with them today. They're turning out really great. You can see, though, I've talked before about how the green does occasionally stain my skin. You can see right here on this nail. Oh, maybe maybe you can't with the way the light is. Right there, right at the cuticle, it's a little bit yellow on my skin. That will come off with acetone and washing my hands, but... And I do love green, but I think next time I'm going to get a more neutral color after I use up all of the latex I have, which is a lot. And I'm not close to finishing it, so that's kind of like, why are you even thinking about this, Gloria? We're not there yet. Okay, so which side am I putting this on, first of all? And don't load the sponge before we do the vinyls. We need the dark green on this side. But first we need to get our vinyls, so let's do that. Now see, this hand does not have latex on it, so it is much more dexterous in late, uh, vinyl removal than the first hand was even though it's my non-dominant hand. It has an advantage today. This latex needs to stay out of the way, though. Excellent. Replacing things with other things that are going to be what you need furniture-wise is a nice feeling. Or just getting furniture that you need if you didn't have one to replace. I am just making sure that the chevron bits are lining up straight, that the points of the triangles are evenly. This one got scooched that way somehow. So I'm just making sure that it's lined up properly before I move on. My husband, at one point, wanted a new desk, and so we bought him a new desk, and then he decided that he didn't like most of the desk, and so we took off the side bar bit and the top hutch bit, and it was just a plain and simple littler desk, and I was like, you could have just had a smaller desk to be begin with, with your purchasing, and then we wouldn't have had to spend quite so much, but, oh well. That was multiple years ago, and now he has a table thing instead. There's a, It's actually an Ikea thing, too. It's like certain legs and then like a tabletop, and he uses that as a desk instead. And it gives you more... I don't even know. More t surface area on the top, of course. Um, but there's something else about it. that he liked. I don't think that was on camera. Sorry, guys. <sighs> nope. Yes. No, come on. It's trying to come out the other direction. There we go. And it didn't want to come out the direction I needed it to. <sighs> oh well. Okay, you see here at the tip, this vinyl does belong there. But that little edge, it's really hard to keep in place while I'm sponging because this wants to get pulled by the sponge. And that little bit of latex that we said we need to make sure it gets covered by the next layer is going to get covered by the next layer. It lined up just fine, so we don't need to adjust it. This is empty, so this is trash. And now we need to use the next sheet. 
Two, two vinyls, okay. Aha! It got all, all the stuff out of the middle, but it also kind of jacked up the vinyl part. I'm going to use that on my pinky, because I'm not going to have that part that's messed up on my nail then. What even happened to make that happen? It, like, can you see that? The little weird rip? No, you can't, because I'm too low. There's little weird rip dimple things, because uh, of the torque, I think, on the vinyl when I pulled it at that angle. Okay, one more. This one's all off-center because there was a piece of dried polish that stuck onto the bottom on this side, and I wanted to line it up with the part that wasn't dry polish, if you're curious why I did it that way. Okay, we're lining up the edge of the chevron with the cuticle, and again, that little bit at the tip is going to be hard to keep there. That's okay, we'll figure it out. Okay, so now that my vinyls are applied. Let's apply the polish. And we said dark's on this dark's on this side. And we're going to try to keep this a little bit more narrow. If we can. I'm actually going to scoop some of that back into the bottle because there's no way that's going to end up on my nail and it feels like a waste. Okay, let's do the thumb first. There's a weird edge of the latex that's peeking over more than I want it to. There we go. Onto the nail area. polish. <laughs> the desperation. There we go. Like I said, I have a color that's almost the same as this. Uh, it's a CND color called Sage Scarf, but I don't want to switch colors like midway through a manicure. Even if it looks pretty much the same, it's not actually the same, and that would really drive me nuts. So, we're not going to do that. We're going to eke out every last bit of pretty cool life that there is in this bottle. <sighs> to complete this design... A big cat's over in the living room looking at me. She's like, you should come over and spend time with me. I'm like, no, I can't. You come over and spend time with me. You were here earlier. The baby cat's up on her tower, though, right up here. There she is, sleeping on top of the tower, being cute. The baby cat, I think I might have mentioned before, is definitely James's cat 
and the big cat is definitely my cat in who they like seek out to sit on. <laughs> like they both like both of us and they both love both of us, but it's pretty obvious that I am Ember's preference and Char prefers James. All right. So, oh my goodness. Come on, do the thing. Thank you. Okay. That one is definitely going to need cleanup just like the other one. But that is to be expected. She's just a little raisin sitting on the top of the cat tree. Small and black and round. Actually, she has the little bit of raisininess to her, her fur. You know how raisins are kind of like a little bit reddish? I have a raisin-colored cat. She's got some white elements to her, obviously, also, because she's like a tuxedo kind of a cat. But she has... The black has red in it when the sun hits it. She's a little raisin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Trying not to lift the vinyls up. I can feel it lifting that direction. So I'm going to try to keep it down. I think I might be a little bit too high. No, that's okay. Holler at me, you guys, if I'm not on camera. Okay, the index nail is ready to come off. We're going to go the way that it's trying to go. And I think that part had some top coat stuck to it. So it's trying to pull against the top coat, but the top coat doesn't want to let go. So I'm pulling it out from under the top coat. Do you see how there's that area that got left behind? That's okay. We can clean that up. I think this nail is also ready. And we're going to have to clean up the tip of that too, but coming out okay. Coming out okay. And then let's press these down really firmly. I'm surprised. I shouldn't be surprised. I've always been really nervous to do sponging over the top of a previous gradient because I, even with the quick dry top coat, I still didn't trust that it wouldn't rip off everything underneath. And I'm glad that it's turning out okay. It's cooperating. And it's not being murderous to all of the previous layers. I'm just using some of the polish here on the stem of the brush to a put it on there since that's where all the polish was since I just dumped it upside down I should have started with my pinky when everything was small 
and on the sponge and then moved toward my thumb as it got wider through blending but I didn't okay so then we're gonna do And again, living wildly. <sighs> that, if that's the extent of my wild living, there isn't a lot of wild living for me to be doing, hey? Okay. I need to put more polish on that one for the pinky. You know how people in the, like, a chef kitchen have the, they have a bowl that they put all their trash in? I feel like that's what I need. Because I have a little trash bag down here, but you guys can't see right here. I've got a little pile of trash building on my work surface. Okay. Pinky. Pinky. Really making sure I get both sides of the gradient. I don't think I need to do more on the ring finger. I feel like I would mess it up if I added more. So I'm just going to leave that alone. All right. Yes. Very good. Very good. Okay, and then the pinky. I feel like I do need a little bit more dark, so let's do one more little daub. Okay. And then... There we go. And now we got to do a cleanup because there's a little, there, I mean, you can see there's a lot of bleeding on that side of that pinky on that edge. Um, a couple of other places. That's a little sponge bit. Get off of there, sponge bit. Um, so let's get, let's close these first of all. We don't want them to be drying out. I'm curious once this settles again, how much will be left in the bottle. Um, and then... I don't think we're going to do dots. I like this just the way it is. I feel like it feels relatively Eastery just with the chevron pattern. So once we finish doing cleanup and any polish, polish surgery that might be necessary, we're going to be, we're going to be done. Let's get... My cleanup brush which is stiff. This acetone is not super clean, so I'm going to get my little other acetone tub and put some clean acetone in it for cleanup, because you can see that, can't you? This has been used for other brush cleaning stuff while I was painting a different design, and I need to not use that to clean up because it's going to leave extra residue behind. I knew I had an empty one, but that one wasn't it. I'm just pouring it from my big gallon jug. There we go. 
that is clean as tone. It's got a little bit of pink uh, reflecting in it from the bottle that it's in, but it's nice and clean. So we're going to go in first around the edges of the nail and get rid of all of the excess. I need to just readjust where my camera is. There. We're going to go in around the edges of the nail and get rid of all of the excess polish on the edges first. And then we're going to go into the nail and clean up anything between the chevrons that isn't where it's supposed to be. Any bleeding. making sure that I'm making a clean edge at the cuticle. For my thumbs, my cuticle on this thumb is a little bit flatter than my cuticle on this thumb, so I use my cleanup as uh, a little bit of an evener. I make this one slightly flatter, and I make that one slightly rounder, and then they end up looking about the same. And it's more even. Okay, so we have an area right here that needs to be sharpened, and one right here. We got a fuzzy. Right here at the edge, there's some lighter color that went too far. I'm not having a lot of acetone on the brush. I'm really only getting it damp so that I'm not going too far through the top coat that's protecting the first gradient that we did. Because we want, we want to just take off the second gradient to reveal the first gradient underneath. We don't want to be going all the way down to the base color. Okay, right here there needs to be more color actually. It looks like it didn't deposit enough. So I'm going to get a little detail brush. And what color is going to be right there? Probably a little mix of these two. So. I'm just going to grab some of this on my little brush. And I'm going to dilute it with a little bit of acetone actually so it's not fully so it's a little bit more translucent and I can paint the edge of that I'm gonna go in and um, clean up with a cleanup brush for that bit too okay aside from needing to go over that one little spot again that nail looks like it's ready for top coat I think I am going to use a little bit of this, though. Same little brush. I'm just going to feather it a little bit so it's not one harsh color there. With top coat, you will not be able to tell that that was a little patch. 
sorry, that was off camera. With top coat, you won't be able to tell that that was a patch. Okay, next nail. Again, we're going around the edge, making sure we don't have any excess polish in the cuticle area. We got a lot of excess polish um, on the tips of the nails and stuff, and I don't think I have any Q-tips. I think they're in the bathroom, so I might have to go grab them because I don't want to be just smearing polish around with my little cleanup brush. Like on the undersides of my nails and stuff. Although, it's really only those two fingers that have it. I think I might be okay. Yeah, I'll be okay without having to go grab them. That corner is going to probably need a little bit of touch up. Sorry, I think I'm a little bit too high up. Let's adjust. And this way a little. Yeah, okay, that's better. Okay, so we have a little bit here that needs to come off. And a little bit here. That should come off. Little uh, flags, I guess, almost they are, from the edges of the vinyl. This bottom edge here has a little bit of bleeding. I did not do clear sponged first before I did the color. I've never actually tried that, but I'm curious to, to see if it would reduce the bleeding. I, I thought about it um, before I started today and then I forgot while I was doing it. There's a little bit of bleeding right there. Oh, I went too far, so I need to add a little bit more. I was like, hmm, there seems like there's something there that I need to take off. No, I took off too much, so I have to add it back. Just right there. Same thing on this corner. I need to add some light. I wish that people wouldn't paint the handles of their brush. My acetone takes the paint off the edge of the brush. fine. That one's ready for top coat. Nearly. I might want to add a little bit of dark on this front. So 
so that that chevron shows up a little bit more. <sighs> Gotta reinstate these little corner triangles just a little bit on the index now, not quite so much. Uh, that goes over too far. I, When I was adjusting it, I should not have adjusted it as much as I did. Middle nail. Well, actually, I need to. Do the middle finger before I get to the middle nail. It's got this whole big bit on the side. There's one of the glitters from the polish I took off. It will have to be removed when I wash my hands. My middle nail, I think, has the deepest side folds, uh, side walls. So it doesn't get polish into that skin as much as some of my other nails. Like there's not a lot here to clean up, despite all of the sponging. Okay, let's see. So this one I have to recreate those tip triangles. <clears throat> but there doesn't seem to be as much on the actual design that needs to be cleaned up. Not, I mean, there's a couple of little dinglies here and there. I think I'm a little too close for you guys to see that clearly because it's out of focus, but here at the tip, I'm going to have to reestablish the zigzag. And there's not going to be a lot of color difference because that bottom gradient in the middle is pretty similar in color to the top gradient. Oh, bummer, I went down too far. Went all the way down to the base color, past the base color on that middle part, because I couldn't see the difference because it was too similar. But here on the edge, it's different. <coughs> I'm going to have to go back in with the little brush. and then the lighter color across the top.
need a little bit of light on the bottom of that. There. That looks okay. With top coat, it's going to blend out a little bit better. Okay. Thanks, LJ. See you later. Oops. Pretty good. Gotta stretch. Oh. I wonder if there's any way to keep the tips down really well the whole time without having to go back. That's good. And then just a little bit right there and a little bit right there. We have our tip problems here. Not hugely so, but a little bit of bleeding on the edge of that triangle. And then the actual tips again. I'm trying not to go too deep down like I did on the middle nail, but this middle part, the blend is pretty subtle. Okay, so I'm going to do This is going to be right there. And then also right there. We got to blend that a little bit. There, that's fine. <sighs> this this edge here is bothering me on the middle nail. I 
think it's because I don't have a smooth enough little spot there. That looks better. And then my pinky. And then this hand's ready for top coat. Stretch again. Oh. This pinky got a lot of stuff in the cuticle. I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but what, where does the stereotype of French people liking to surrender come from? Is that a thing from one of the world wars? Who, Char? Yeah. I'm going to have to look that up later see where that stereotype came from because most of the history of our country we have been allies with France so it's interesting that we have that stereotype you know unless that stereotype is something that we've absorbed from other countries and their opinions of France yeah that's what I was thinking Nate but I don't know if that's accurate Got polish in my cuticles. All right. So then we gotta clean up that little bit there. That's in between where it shouldn't be, and this bit here. That's in between where it shouldn't be. I have to reestablish that a little bit, but that looks pretty okay. Fine. Let's do one last pass along the edge of this. Sorry, I'm too high. And then we're ready to do top coat on this hand. Let's get 
let's just stick with the same top coat since we're already using it. The Vibrant Vinyls Fast and Hard top coat. And yes, I'm not going to worry about cuticle whatever. I'm just going to really get it on there nicely. And we can go back and clean up the cuticles afterward. Okay. That looks great. we got to get the cuticle scoop, though, because we don't want it to dry. We'll do full cleanup after that's dry, but that looks pretty good to me. There's a hair, sorry. It got in the top coat, I wanted it to leave. No hairs welcome in my nail art, despite their constant invasion. That one's okay. This edge here is a little bit indistinct, but that's all right. <sighs> Sorry. There we go. One looks pretty good too. I haven't decided if I want these matte or shiny. I'm probably going to make them matte. Because that's got a more egg sort of a texture to it. Plus, I just like matte.
I might do a second coat of top coat. Oh, no, I'm doing matte. I don't have to do a second coat of top coat. Uh, that will be my second coat of top coat. Okay, so that hand first top coat is done. We're looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy. Let's do the other hand. Clean up. There's uh, a lot of latex hanging around under some of the dried top coat on this hand because I wasn't able to do the top coat as carefully. So I just got to make sure I don't re-adhere it to my nail. Do you know what I mean? Like that little bit there needs to be brushed away instead of onto the nail. We were talking before about making sure that my thumb cuticle lines were similar. This one I have to do a little bit of rounding on, and the other one I have to do a little bit of flattening on before it feels even. Rather than just following the line of the cuticle, but I think that looks pretty even. I don't like painted paint brush handles because it gets it all over my skin. Okay, so then we're doing some cleanup between the chevrons on this side. The dark got a little bit too, too in between. We might have to go back in and touch up a little bit of the light. This side looks pretty good though. I don't think I need to go back in and add light really anywhere except for right there. I'm sorry, I'm not on camera. Okay, let's... <laughs> let's do some touch-up.
Okay. Gonna go in on this edge now. Make sure we don't have any polish on the skin. And one more time around on this side. Even up that polish line after the touch-ups that we did. Make sure there isn't anything down in that sidewall area either. All right, that's ready for top coat. We're not gonna top coat it yet though. We're gonna do all the rest of the nails on this hand. Index nail next. All of this polish needs to go. We've got quite a bit of bleeding on that side where the dark went over where it shouldn't have. We're going to have to go back in and clean up that. Clean that up. And there's a lot of polish excess on this side that didn't come off with the latex because I think, like I mentioned on the thumb, some of the top coat from the first layer uh, wanted to stay around because I hadn't separated it properly because it was on my non-dominant hand because it was on my dominant hand, painted by my non-dominant hand. I got a lot of polish on this index finger, I think, partly because I was using it to remove the vinyls and the latex off of my other hand. Little by little, wiping the excess on the paper towel. Little by little. Excuse me. We're going to have to add a little bit of light for the top chevron on this side. And we're going to have to obviously remove some dark on the other side. So let's remove the dark first. Okay, that's pretty good. This tip actually stayed on okay. I don't have to do too much editing down here. So that's nice. Um, I am going to go in with a little bit of light on the one side. Uh, 
right here where this didn't quite make it to the edge. Um, and I do need to fill in a little bit right there where I went down through the base color. Um, but aside from that, I think that nail needs nothing else. Let's make sure that the edge is clean. Big stretch. All right, that one's ready for top coat once I get there. Middle nail next. There's a lot in this cuticle, unfortunately. So we gotta do some scooping. The actual um, zigzags seem like they're doing okay, though. There's not a lot to change here. <sighs> Baby cat's still up there. She's being sweet. Just a little donut roll sleeping on her tower. Trying to get down in between the skin and the nail because there's some polish that got shoved up in there by the sponge. There we go. I want to make sure this curve is really even though because this cuticle can sometimes be annoying. Okay, so we do need a little bit of cleanup right here. Sorry, that's not in frame right here on the edge of this chevron down by the cuticle area um, and we need a little bit a couple of little tags to be wiped off in a couple of places but not too bad and then this tip area doesn't have a lot to change. That's fine. Two more nails of cleanup and then matte top coat. There's not a whole lot of finger cleanup on this one. That's good. I do still have some in the cuticle. Sorry, I'm a little bit lower. Right in there.
<laughs> She's just so sweet sitting up there. She has this habit of scooching the cat tree a little bit closer to the window so she can peek through the blinds a little bit better. Uh, she pushes it closer so that the edge of the cat tree pushes the blinds apart and she can get them to stay open. It's funny. Okay, so we're going right there. We do have a little bit of bleeding on the light side, which is more uncommon on this nail. It's kind of funny how that happens. Mm. We do need to get some here as well. And then in between. There's bleeding there, but it's the exact same color as the color underneath, so you can't tell. <laughs> same thing at the tip here. I removed the color that bled, but it's the exact same color because it's right in the middle of the gradient. <laughs> it's funny. I'm going to have to add a little bit of light right there, though, on that side. This one, the contrast between the two sides of the nail is the most consistent between the two. The dark is the dark, is really dark on the second layer. That nail is one of my favorites. Okay, where's my little brush? Here it is. What was that face for? cat stuff? What did the cats do? Did I miss something? I totally didn't notice that they were doing anything. Okay. That one is one of my favorites. Oh, yeah, that was a couple minutes ago. I must not have just seen the face in time. I'm neglecting chat. Sorry. Okay, so this one has a lot of bleeding in this corner. You can see there's a lot of dark that scooch through. But we're not going to deal with that until after we do the cuticle cleanup because some of it's going to come off. With the cuticle cleanup. I know that's out of focus, guys. I'm sorry. I just need to have this angle for a second.
Okay. So let's see what cute, what actual nail cleanup there is. Okay, this over here, this triangle got too big. And then on this side also, I actually need to add some mid-tone in the middle of that zigzag because it all came off or didn't get put on properly. And then this part here going down, I'll be able to adjust that pretty well. This one here, very minor. Okay, and then on the other side, on the light side, we got some bleeding here as well. But not a lot. There's actually some missing from that other one too. So we need some mid-tone color repair and some dark color repair. Let's do that. This mid-tone color. I'm just gonna finish that chevron. And also this. Whoops. That got a little bit thick. That's okay. And then right here. Need to add a little bit of dark there. But before we do, I'm going to take off some of this. That's a little bit too much. And the dark. Okay. Right there. Get rid of some of that light. Okay. So this hand's ready for top coat. So let's do that. There's a bubble there on the edge of one of the chevrons. Because there's actually a very slight height difference, you know, between the polish at the bottom of the chevron and the polish at the top. Uh, bottom and then top, not bottom and top. That wasn't very clear, sorry. Communicatively. This thumb is better than this thumb. Oh well. No nail can be, not every nail will be equally perfect 
when it comes to a design like this, there's always going to be a couple that are just a little bit more spectacular. I think I'm out of focus. I'm being a little bit too far away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That cuticle still has some stuff under it. Hang on. There. There's a little bit of a texture that's created by the sponge that catches the top coat just a little bit and tries to bubble it occasionally. So I'm trying to be mindful of that when I'm applying the top coat and it's turned out pretty good. Ask, I'll be careful. Look at that, there's, I forgot to go around the edge on the pinky again after I did the touch-ups. I re-sullied my eponychium. Oh. There. Sorry, I just banged into the camera. Oh, the baby's looking out toward the living room from her perch on high. And the pinky. All right. So we gotta scoop the cuticle to get the top coat on these two, and then we're gonna go and do a matte top coat on everybody, and then we will be done. I'm gonna do final top coat cleanup off of camera, I think, later after I'm able to take a shower. close these. We don't need them anymore. And we don't want them to dry out. And we need our matte top coat, which is the, of course, ever lovely Kixotic Polish Truly Mattly Deep
I extol the virtues of this polish every time I use it. So if you haven't heard them already, tell me and I'll do it again. Otherwise, I will leave it at the fact that it's my favorite. Metal nail. One of the best things about this as a matte top coat, I told you I wasn't going to extol its virtues today, but here I go, is that it self levels really pretty well. A lot of matte top coats, if you put I don't know, it just doesn't self-level, and so it feels like there's edges between the brush strokes. But this one doesn't do that. It is really nice at helping even out the surface of the nail. You can see how smooth, right? I put a little daub of extra right there and it totally blended back in. Now, I don't want to do the matte top coat on my other hand quite just yet because that top coat has not had long enough to set properly and, f and dry for me to be putting something else over the top of it. So I actually am going to do some cleanup for the top coat on this hand. Not like all of it, but some. Oh, there's a hair in there. Oh well, best laid plans.
I'm, I like these. I, I like these. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. There were a couple of points in the process where I was doubting myself and saying, mm, will this really look that good? Is it worth it? And I think it is. That looks nice. looks pretty good. I'm going to actually bring you guys in closer on this hand before we go to other stuff. And there we are. My little uh, reciprocal chevron gradient. Obviously, I need to moisturize my cuticles, so there's still some dry skin and things, but uh, they're a little bit more green in person than they were. Let's bring the focus back down here. There we go. So I can do the other hand with matte. This is what it looks like glossy. Right, and that's what it looks like matte. So it's got a different finish, different texture to it. I like matte. I think that's been firmly established. All right. Capping the tip with top coat is one of the most important things that you can do to extend the life of your manicure. Yes, you're supposed to cap with color too, but capping with top coat is very important. Because you can cap with your color, but if your top coat's catching on things, it's going to create chips and take the color with it. Okay. And then matte top coat on the index finger. I'm almost done. Okay. What about it? Didn't we want to cook thingy yeah. thing? Yeah. yeah. Which one do you want to make first? I also don't care. They both sound good. We're trying uh, Green Chef 
the meal box thing. And we had a pork chop with curry and pickled radish thing the other day. That was good. And well, the the two meals, and they, two meals of different uh, flavor profile, probably both at the same time might not be. I don't know, the best idea. Both. Nate was saying he should do both. Could do both. We could do both, but we wouldn't. Uh, It'd be funny. It would be funny. Make a huge mess in the kitchen. It would, yes, make a huge mess in the kitchen. Um. Yeah, the uh, the quality of the ingredients was pretty good. Yeah. The portions I wish were a little bigger, because they I don't know. Yeah, James and I tend to do like one meal, one big meal for the day, and they have 500 calories between 400 and 500 per meal per serving, which is not enough. But uh, the interesting ingredients and things that they're providing is cool. We're getting a walnut crust barramundi on Wednesday that I'm excited to try. I don't think I've ever seen barramundi in a store near me. We'll come back to that. Let's do the pinky. And then we can close the top coat. Right, I think that's out of frame. Sorry, I'm too far back. Not out of frame, but out of focus. Do you see how smooth it dries? Even if I apply it weird like that. I like. Okay. Thanks, Nate. Okay, we're going to do one quick pass around the cuticles on this hand with the brush just to get some of that dry, all of this, the dry whatever that can come off pretty easy. And then we will be done. And I'm going to go cook. Well, James might want to do most of the cooking. He didn't really. He. He might want some help, though. <sighs> Gotta get that fuzzy out of the way.
Here we go. Okay. I think that's out of focus. You know, I should just change the focus to be where I am. Because that's where I want to be right now. Okay, two nails. Sorry, I just ran into you with the brush. All right, one nail left. that is most of it and the rest like I said will come off I'll do another quick round of cleanup after I have washed my hands or loosened it with some hot water later but that's fine for now I can live with that thanks for hanging out everybody I will see you on the next stream, probably next weekend. Bye. Oh, you know what? Let me check and see if I want to host anybody. Give me a second. Because Colette is probably on. See if I'm right. Yes, she is. I'm going to host Colette. Give me a second. There we go. And now I say bye.